<clears throat> Hello everyone, it's Richard here. I wanted to go over uh, what I'm going to try to do. Um, I want to replay the Grand Campaign. And I want to do it with Deductor's Mod. But I needed to find the right difficulty. And I had been experimenting with, um, like, Double Field Marshal, <laughs> Double Rommel, <coughs> Guderian, um, and I kind of realized, uh, Guderian's really boring, by the way. I don't think you'll ever see anyone show Guderian, because you just ultimately get super fast units and dump prestige into elite replacements. And <clears throat> there's only, like, a few maps that might be hard, and then it's just... It's just trivial, because there's no other difficulty, because you <clears throat> are not overwhelmed by stronger numbers, and you're not overwhelmed from lack of experience, and you're going to have more prestige than God, so um, it's just not difficult. So Ghadarian <laughs> was just not interesting. Um, I also really like to play with the Doctor's Mod, just because like I, I don't feel like I really showcase certain things very well, and it was partly because I wasn't playing with an historic core. And I probably should try to do that, and it makes I think it makes certain features of this mod even better. <clears throat> the other thing is, um, I want to show a different core composition approach that <clears throat> I don't really think other players do, but it makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm also going to play on Field Marshal level, so that way I am not going to run into prestige issues at that level. And the punishment is that <clears throat> I will I will have a harder time gaining experience, <clears throat> and when I upgrade out of class, I'm really going to hate it, but that's okay. I'll just have to pour more money into elite replacements, and I should have a comfortable amount of prestige. I should be able to probably get a decisive victory most of the time, <clears throat> and I think I can kind of focus... It, it, it's less about <clears throat> getting a decisive victory... And more about like showing you uh, cool things that I've kind of learned as I'm playing Panzer Corps. So uh, <clears throat> the first part of my core is the Luftwaffe, and uh, you'll notice I have a fewer units than is expected. So <clears throat> there's three strategic bombers. That is my unique um, input on the Luftwaffe. I find that every level bomber has a place in my core. And probably what you'll see is that the Yunker gets used a lot in the early war, and then I'm really only using it uh, for ships after that. So the Yunker is never going to have more than one hero. It doesn't really have a place after 1942, but I will deploy it a few times in 43 and try to get it to five stars, and then he's going to get shelved because the Yunker late war not that helpful. <clears throat> and you'll probably see me deploy the Heinkel and Donier. Like, I'll kind of rotate them if I can fit them in. Eight fighters, that's... Uh, I think that's a pretty reasonable number of fighters. I think that in the past, Panzer Corps players were getting way too many fighters. Um, when you consider that there's like six hero fighters that they give you over the campaign, you don't need to be buying a bunch of fighters. You know, you'll see that you could just get your AA guns, and that compensates for having fewer fighters, and it's more balanced. So uh, there's nothing new there. I'm imagining I'm going to have these at these hero. You get in 45, you get two BF heroes, and they're 109 Ks. So I figure that plane representation is great, and then I'll probably end up with three FWs, and then three BF 109 Gs. Uh, the three FWs will probably be Bar, Novotny, and one of my starter planes. <clears throat> or Kittle, I'm not sure. One of those three. Um, and then Tactical Bombers is light. So a lot of players go heavy on the Tactical Bombers. I don't think you need to. Uh, you're given one, you get a Rudel, you get a Lint. <clears throat> um, I, what I will do that's different... <clears throat> I, I notice that people are using uh, mesh, mesh Smiths with Lint. That's probably smart. Um... There is another class of planes I never see anyone use. It's an HS class. I don't know what it is. I figure in 43 when that, uh, or 42, 
when that plane becomes available, I'll just take my non-brutal um, bomber, which is pretty much not that useful in 42. It's really dangerous to use him. I could just upgrade him into some fighter plane with hopefully high defenses, and every now and then I could deploy him just for fun to see what it's like. <clears throat> and then I'm going to bring three AAs. This is smaller than I think a lot of people... This is either more than what a lot of people have or smaller. Um, I, I kind of have been watching Bricado's, um attempt on Rommel. I think four is unnecessary. <clears throat> now, things can get really, really tight in 1944, but you can always compensate by bringing an extra fighter because you're never going to have a fighter problem. You know, by 1944, you're going to get um, Blackthorn, Blackhorn, Barkthorn, I, I forgot his name, but you're going to get a fighter and that's going to give you six fighters and... You know, you could just deploy all of your fighters and all of your AA. I don't know if you need to, but if you feel like it's getting too hot, you could, you're could. you going to have plenty of air defense. I don't think that you need more than that. And I, I, I've kind of been looking at how Bricada is playing 1943, and um, I think his issue is that he is sometimes sending his fighters off <clears throat> to kind of kill things. And I, I think that you're just better off uh, being in a defensive setup, and especially in 44, you're just better off being in a, de in a defensive setup. So it's like super dangerous to send your fighters away from your units. And so I would have a very uh, like defensive air defense plan because I, I recognize how dangerous that is. And there's some evolutions I'm showing here. I, I don't need to do that. Uh, then right, okay, so here's what's going to be a little bit different, is instead of thinking about a core that has two regular divisions, I think, and I have found in practice, it's a lot more fun if you have a regular division and you have an SE division. And what I like about this is who does what is a lot more clear. If you've watched Bricada playing, he has a really solid approach to the maps that that inspired me to kind of do this split. I really think you need like a shock division to kind of do the dirty work and break through somewhere. And, and it totally makes sense for your best units to have the best equipment in the SE division <coughs> and for a regular division <coughs> to have, <coughs> well, less awesomeness. So... So in my regular division, you can see I'm going to have three anti-tanks. That seems like a lot. Um, the reason I'm going to have so many anti-tanks is I want to showcase everything with Deductor's Mod. So we're going to keep our pack. We're going to eventually get a, a Yag Panzer IV. We're eventually going to get a Martyr and then a Nashorn. I just think that when you look at the way Bricada is using the anti-tank, um, they are really, really strong units, and you should have more of them. So in 43, you know, I'm probably going to be deploying six anti-tanks. And I think it's a really good idea. And I I think it'd be cool to just kind of showcase how each of them is performing. Um, because I think that uh, these units should be highlighted more. And I'm glad to see Bricado is doing that. <clears throat> uh, and then, you know, I'll have a scout car. That'll eventually just be an all-terrain scout car. I'm going to have five tanks. Uh, one of my Panzer 1s, I'll upgrade to a Panzer 3M. The other will become a Flam. Then you get Kersha and Kesha, or I mean Rondorf and Kesha, and then Litzka. Um, he comes later in 44. So what you'll notice is I'm going to have, like, one of the things not on here is my 38T, because that becomes an anti-tank later. So I'm going to have, like, what looks like I'm front-loading a bunch of tanks in my division, but in reality, I'm not deploying that many. Um, the flam tank will disappear at some point because it's simply too vulnerable to use. The Panzer 3N is simply going to be sitting, you know, in my in my uh, deployment slots after Kursk. There's, you know, it's very very dangerous even with Deductor's mod to deploy the Panzer 3N. Maybe there's a few scenarios here and there I deploy it, but it's mostly going to be sitting there rotting away, and then. Um, so when I get into 1944, I'm going to be having, like, two tanks in my regular division. And then I'm going to get Litzka, and then I'll have my third tank again. 
which is at least a tiger. So, you know, that'll that'll give some backbone to the regular division. But, um, <clears throat> like, the reality is the regular division is going to get noticeably weaker when we get into 44. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is there's only five uh, artillery that I'll have. And I'll try to upgrade them to something different in 43. <clears throat> so, um... You can see the evolution. I'll get a couple of Vespas, and then I'll get a Girl H, I think. I think that's one of the artillery. And then a Stug. I think the Stug either upgrades for free to the Stu 42, or it's the Girl H. I don't remember. And then the 15th centimeter will just upgrade to this other one. So there's a lot of different types of artillery, and I want to showcase all of them. And then uh, the Nebelwaffer will become a 30, 30 centimeter eventually. Probably it won't hit 30 centimeter until 44, um, just because th that high ammo count is nice to have. And then infantry. This is where it gets a little interesting. So there are six hero infantry units that you can earn uh, playing the Grand Campaign. Three of them will be assigned to my regular division. I think it's necessary. Um, it will actually give the, the division a little backbone. So a lot of, I, I think in this division, there's something like six hero units. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's absolutely necessary. It's going to really keep this division from falling apart. So I have Wernsberger, Pine, and Hetzenhauer, which comes later in 44. So before that, though, I'm going to have a couple of regular infantry. I'm going to upgrade my mountain to cavalry and my regular with trucks to a bridge engineer and a paratrooper. And I'll get into why this is, but you can think of the regular division as a utility division. It is not really supposed to be the cut to the final objective division. There's a lot of room in the late war for a division that cleans up. If, if you watch Bricada's approaches on maps, it, it seems like if you get like a really strong centralized force that's really willing to get in the trenches and do some fighting... And then you've got a, a force that kind of cleans up the edges, is protecting your flanks, um, that's probably facing a quieter front. Um, <clears throat> you know, that that's where the regular division belongs as much as possible. Um, you might have some scouting from Kesha to kind of let you know where things are going. But what I'm envisioning is that my regular division is going to hit the soft spots on the map. Um and potentially maybe a few of these anti-tanks kind of go with the SE division, and their job is to guard a bridge, guard a hex. Um, you know, so, so that's that's kind of what I'm envisioning, and that allows the SE division to kind of move on and not worry about getting outflanked. Um, the paratroopers are there because there are times where it historically makes sense to have paratroopers, and later, every now and then, I benefit from having paratroopers on the map. However, the paratroopers are not a core focus of my development. The, I don't know if they'll even hit three stars. Maybe. It, it doesn't matter to me if they get heroes or not. They're just utility. So, you know, I probably will get them to three stars, but I don't think a lot more than that. Um, Wernsberger's necessary, Pine, um, and Hetzenhauer. I wish that Hetzenhauer was a Grenadier, but he isn't. Um, and then I'll have two regular infantry. So, like, this is not what you call a heavy weapons uh, division. It's it's a support division, and we've got a lot of slow movers. And their job is to kind of clean up after where the action is. I think that is fine. Moving on. SE division. So, once again, three anti-tanks. So, yes, this means I'll be buying uh, four Panzerjägers and trying to develop them on a field marshal level. But I'm going to have a lot of prestige, so that's less of a big deal than you think it is. Um, the 38T naturally becomes a Martyr three, and then that becomes a Hetzer. So I'll buy a 38T as soon as possible, and that bad boy is going to be pretty devastating by the end of the war. I think it makes sense to put such strong units with the SE. You'll get a Yag, Panther, and then an Elephant will come with this. I figure, it, you know, an elephant being assigned to an SE division probably historically makes sense. And a Jag Panther is actually a really good anti-tank 
I think that should probably be assigned to the SE, and the Hetzer is also an extremely strong anti-tank. As far as tanks go, you know, um, you're going to see something very strange here. There's only six SE tanks. Um, the other two SE units will be infantry. So one will be a Panzer III that will be upgraded to a Tiger. The other two Panzer IVs will become Panthers. And then um, I'll get another Tiger in 43 at some point. If I have to upgrade out of class to do it, it's fine. I don't think Prestige will be that big of a deal. And at some point, I'm going to get another Panther SE unit in 44, presumably. And then in 45, I want a Tiger II. It's not like I'm going to be able to do a lot with it, but it would be nice to kind of show a Tiger II in action. Maybe I'll get it to two stars by the end of that campaign. Who knows? The artillery is also interesting. I think it's a very unique combination, and I think that this works for an SE division. So I get the captured Polish 10 centimeter, and that's what it will be until uh, the Hummel comes along, and then I'll just upgrade it to that. Um, there will be a Stug assigned to it. I'll make that a Brumbar when that becomes available. There's an ISU you can capture. It totally makes sense that uh, an ISU should fit right in with a Shock division. It's mobile. It's got range of three. Um, I can see a lot of room in the core for that. And then a Wolf Ramen makes sense. It's not that common in artillery piece, but with the SE aspect... It, it, it feels less ridiculous. And then a Storm Panzer II. Um, I'm probably going to just skip the Storm Panzer I. I don't know yet. But uh, the Storm Panzer II is reasonably strong. So um, I think it has range 2 in his mod. But it, it, again, it makes sense. A lot of mobility. So by 43, you know, the SE units are supported by mobile artillery. I think it, it, it gives them some oomph. To kind of get into combat. And then there's going to be a scout. I'm going to buy a Panzer II. And then that naturally becomes a Lux. Um, I figure like a hard target scout. Would be a good thing to send. With the, the vision. The infantry are. Three hero, two SE. And then one is bot. So one of my regular infantry will become a Crotchetson in 1940. The two SE regulars. Will become two SE grenadiers. And then. In 41, I'll give them half-tracks, which is when it makes sense. They should have the best equipment, in my opinion. You know, they're SE infantry, and we should treat them like they deserve it. I'm also going to throw Oladir in this group, because Oladir is the best infantry unit. It totally makes sense that it would be deployed with the SE division. And then Allen's Berger and, and Succus are... Uh, they have half-tracks given to them, so it totally makes sense that... Uh, these units that are given half tracks, the speed that I want to move, uh, it, it kind of makes sense that uh, they would join the SE division. What probably doesn't make sense is keeping them mountain units, but if I upgrade them out of class in 1943, they're going to take a massive hit. So I think I'm just kind of stuck with the fact that they have half tracks, or that they're mountain units. The half tracks, I think, are necessary to support fast movement, and then they'll have a Crotchetson as a scouting unit. So it's a very, like, this is super powerful, right? Look at this, a couple Tigers, a Tiger II, Yag Panther, Elephant, really strong artillery, really strong infantry, some of the strongest infantry in the game. I think that you really want the SE units, the SE divisions, to consist of some of the strongest units in the game. Um, so what I'm envisioning uh, in 1939, I build up the regular core in Luftwaffe. There's no surprise. I will uh, use. I have. A, I will upgrade to a bridge engineer, probably at Lods because I have a new idea for Lods. But uh, the thing about the bridge engineer is it's a utility. It will come at the expense of a regular infantry. That's kind of the other reason I want the regular infantry in there. If I swap it out for a paratrooper or a bridge engineer, I'm probably not losing that much. So um, the, the, the goal here isn't to use them in combat. You know, I, I'm not even expecting these guys to get 100 kills. They're, they're really just there to do their job. And I think that there's more opportunities to use them than people realize, and I want to show that. Uh, paratroopers in Norway make sense. Like, I'm going to buy a paratrooper in Norway... And, and they're going to 
be used where, you know, either they historically were used or every now and then, especially in 41, you can find a use for them. It's a little ahistorical, but uh, at least they get to show off the paratroopers from time to time. They are not um, probably, you know, I would say at some point in 42, I don't think paratroopers will get deployed very much. Probably at Stalingrad, because I need every infantry unit I can get. But um, probably after Kursk, I think you will never see the paratroopers deployed. Because they're uh, they're not really supposed to be on the Eastern Front. Um, Oladir will serve as a pioneer from a regular division until 41. And 41 is when the SE division becomes more formal and uh, it gets buffed up. And then, um, and then my plan with AA is one up through Narvik, and then you're going to see two AA after that. The SE will be a part of the regular corps until 41. Um, and the other wrinkle I'm adding to the play, the, to the playthrough that's unique, is I'm not going to allow any overstrength in 39. So not a single unit is, is allowed any overstrength. I think it makes it slightly more challenging. It's very doable. Um, but you're going to see it gets more interesting in 40. Um, yeah, so I'm just talking about how I think it will look. Uh, this is just, I don't even know why I made this slide. Just, Cork 40 continued. Um, okay, so the other restriction on the playthrough is only one over strength point can be applied on any given unit. Now, I'm not going to restrict it to just certain types of units. Any unit, if I want to give it a point of over strength, I think that's fair. Um, or I could choose not to do it at all. So what I like about this is some of these overpowered units, they're going to have issue like they're they're gonna be strong but now not as strong so like oladir is gonna have one point of over strength the se units which are super powerful only get one over strength and uh they're still gonna be insanely strong but it's not uh soul crushing <laughs> um and it, once again i'm reminding you paras and bridge engineers are simply utility units um I don't really care if they get heroes or lots of kills. I'm just going to deploy them in situations that make sense. Um, and then there's going to be like a massive rotation of tanks, anti-tanks, anti-aircraft. I'll just be deploying based on need and who needs to be deployed. Because I'm on field marshal, so I have to get the experience going early. And I will buy a Stug 2A at Arras. That will be the first time I deploy four artillery units. And then I will continue to deploy four until 41. And then, uh, <clears throat> so this is what it looks like at 41. Uh, uh, the SE and regular infantry become, oh yeah, the SE division, regular division become distinct for the first time. SE will act as shot troops. SE will, uh, will get half tracks except for Oladir. He really doesn't need them. Um, the I Dia is, when you have a grind-out spot, that's what I want the regular division to do. So if I deployed at Minsk, the SE is deployed north, the regular division is deployed south. And the reason for that is the south is where all the grindy spots are. So the SE division's goal is to basically seize Minsk. I mean, it's that, it's that simple. And we know that the fighting around Minsk can get a little nasty. So I'm going to send my best troops there. Um, and in 41, any unit can get two points of overstrength. <laughs> Some people, like, that's not such a big deal in 41. Um, but, um, uh, you might be relying on your artillery too much, but I'm limiting what you can do. Um, and then this is the core in 42. Uh, units can be overstrengthened by three. I might, I'm actually tempted to take that away and save that for 43. But um, SE becomes much bigger in 42. Anti-tank really starts to take over. Uh, our artillery deployments hit max this year. And then this is the year where upgrade like um, upgrades out of class start to hurt. And in 43, I take bigger XP hits to tactical bombers, tanks, and anti-tanks because I'm going to be upgrading out of class. I hit max deployment slot and... 
uh, yeah, there's more infantry and anti-tank than ever. So suddenly the tanks kind of take a back seat a bit, and there's more anti-tank infantry action. Um, after 43, the regular division gets smaller, but and it's still essentially signed cleanup and guard duty, and the SE is still strong and will be doing most of the nasty fighting. Uh, I keep uh, Kirscher and Rondorf Panzer IVs. Um, they're going to be more vulnerable in 1944, so you got to be careful keeping them Panzer IVs, but I think it makes sense. Litzka joined, so I'll actually get like a serious tank. So <laughs> for the first time, uh, basically since Stalingrad, the regular division will have like something heavy to help. And the Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe will noticeably shrink this year. It will basically be AA and fighters. If I ever feel like I have the deployment slots, you know, maybe I can squeeze Rudel or Lent in there. But I'm pretty sure by 44, Lent and my other tactical bomber are are retired. Um, I I may even not feel comfortable deploying Rudel because it gets pretty nasty in 44. And that's it. So that's uh, the evolution of of the core. I like to try this. I think that I could show you uh, like more creative uses of cavalry and Crotchetson. Um, I find playing with them is insanely fun. It, it's kind of frustrating playing the base game without this multi-move option because Crotchetson and cavalry are so weak because they don't have that multi-move option. The other benefit of the mod is the paratroopers, the Crotchison and Cavalry have six ground defense. And uh, the way experience works is the base level is eight and you have to hit three stars before you hit nine. But if you're below eight, every star of experience gives you one more ground defense. So if I get Cavalry to two stars, it has the same ground defense as regular infantry. There are a lot of benefits to having uh, that kind of ground defense. They can actually hold their own, especially at two stars, against infantry. So you don't feel dumb anymore if you deploy them. Um, so the other thing is tigers are... Um, a lot of uh, panthers and tigers, the stats on them are changed. They're less overpowered. And it kind of more realistically fits how effective they were. So there's stuff like that. I just wish I had looked more carefully at how Deductor's Mod worked with the latest rules. Because um, double Rommel with the latest Panzer Corps version and Deductor's Mod is absolutely, totally stupid. <laughs> I, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. I, I managed to show a decisive victory all the way up to Storming Stalingrad. Like... Yeah, it's possible. I mean, Deductor did the same thing, but it, he had a lot more prestige. Like, like the expense of paying for things was cheaper. Um, if you add the latest rules, Deductor would have been broken long before Stalingrad. <laughs> so I also realized, like, that was making the game less fun because I couldn't showcase awesome units because it was too expensive. But if I just put it on Field Marshal setting... The I'm not going to be able to get away with getting super experienced units quickly. But I can afford to upgrade things. I can afford elite replacements on a regular basis. Um, I can build up my core really fast. It's just a matter of getting experience. So I feel like it'll just be more relaxing. And I also don't necessarily have to push for decisive victories. I could just kind of, like you know, play comfortably and, and you know, what happens is what happens. The point isn't, like, to, to showcase my super amazing skill. The point is to show you why this mod is fun. Um, 